those who are competing in the shows that they are actually exactly. in competition, yeah. not training. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Shots from the National Youth Games taking place in Nasabatu. Let's have a feel of what is happening there. Under 15 competition taking place there. And right now, all the states in Nigeria are participating with their athletes. Welcome you on the show. Weekend Sport on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. Well, it's a weekend full of action, both in football and other sports in a moment. Uh, well, we know that in Nigeria we have our own traditional sport in martial arts. We'll be talking about that, but briefly, let me take you to South Africa, where FIBA under 18 Afro basket taking place at, concerning our ladies, J Tigress. They did well, they've qualified for the final against Uganda. FIBA under 18 Afro basket, Junior D Tigress beat Uganda, set up final clash against Mali. Mali, they are the defending champion and they won it eight times, but our ladies are really rearing to go because they were able to win that game 71 66. I want to give kudos to the MVP of that particular game. Uh, they call her Beggy, Iduma, Idubama Beggy, for being able to score a lot of uh, points for Nigeria. Also, their coach, Dwinos Proud, for the fact that uh, she has been able to nurture the team uh, to glory. Well, that's uh, Idubama Beggy there. The coach, Coach Juliana, has really done it for herself, taking a cue from Nigerian national team coach as uh, Wakama. Congrats to the under-18 team for what they've done. And if they are at, at, from the way it is right now, they've also qualified for the World Cup. Yes, they'll be coming up in Czech Republic. That'll be in 2025 for the under-19 uh, FIBA uh, uh, competition there in 2025. Congrats to them. And now, whatever comes as the outcome of this game, uh, Nigeria versus Mali, Nigeria will still go to Czech Republic. And the good thing is that, well, they'll be facing uh, Mali in the final and they are battle ready for this game and we just so that they will be able to defeat Mali and also make us happy there. For the men, that's the under-18 uh, under boys rather, they actually fell out in their game uh, where they lost a, uh, in that particular encounter. Well, congrats to them for what they did by being able to qualify for the final and also picking the ticket to get to the FIBA under-19 competition that will be coming up in Czech Republic in 2025. Giving you a feel of what is happening concerning Team Nigeria. Although for our boys, they fell out, but we just saw that they would do well. For our ladies too in football, Falconet, they also they were burned out of the competition after they lost their game in the round of 16. Right now, earlier on, I mentioned traditional sports gaining momentum in Nigeria. We know Dambe is a very popular sport that is really gaining a lot of popularity across the globe. Before we actually unveil the guests, let's go for a short break. If you look at that particular shot there, Dambela is actually taking over. That's why we're bringing to you uh, one of the co-founders of Dambe Warriors, who are really propagating that sport. It's really gaining momentum. We've seen fighters from different nations coming to Nigeria to participate. And this third edition of Dambe Warriors Super Fight will be an exception. In fact, it's getting bigger 
turned into a blockbuster. Uh, that was the expectation right now. Abuja is buzzing on Sunday. Well, that fight will be coming up where you saw those uh, eight big fighters in the lightweight, middleweight, and also heavyweight category locking horns at the velodrome of MK Abiola. Well, we'll be giving you live uh, <laughs> event of everything that is happening there on Trust TV. Well, right now in the studio, Co-founder of Dambe Warrior is here. Chidi Aina is here to talk with us concerning the Dambe Warrior Circle 3, as they call it, is a league of uh, Dambe fighters. But he's here to give us insight to those uh, activities that have to do with uh, Dambe Warriors. Good to have you, uh, Chidi Morning Aina. Me. Good mm. morning, me. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks yes, for being here. at least to some extent now, uh, the, 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 the way the fight is sounding, yeah. it's as if we are experiencing another WWE yeah. in Nigeria. In fact, so the thing is, the, there's been intense makeover, makeup <laughs> of the game, really. Like, when we started this journey in 2016, thereabout, Dambe was, oh, of course, it's local, it's traditional, it's almost like... Um, something fought at the backyards of many communities in the north and some parts of the south where the, the northerners are aggregating. And so it, it, it had, the rules were a bit, you know, f were, were, were nebulous, were, were loose. You could, you could just hit somebody down and then the game is over. Mm -hmm. You know, there, was, there wasn't such a structured system around it. And people, f but what was clear was that there were different fight houses from about three of them. So we came in and we, we decided to do a makeover. We called all the Dambi elders from different parts of the country to Lagos, assembled them in a place, spent like a three days workshop with all the best fighters in the country, all the referees, all the officials, and rewrote the rules. And then tried to make it TV friendly. And that's why your TV station is going to be showing it live. We, we, we tried to do, give it that, 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 in, that light, glamour action, mm. you know, that, that will make it sellable and put it on a conveyor belt from Kano to Las Vegas, as we said, step at a time. We've done our first season in Kano at the, at the Usman Dam, uh, uh, um, is it? Uh, Senior Bacha Stadium. Senior Bacha Stadium, yes. Mm. Then we had the, we had the, um, the, the second one at Munio Kola, the heart of VI. And now we're having the third one in Abuja, the Velodrome. And every time we are increasing it by a f the quality, by a factor of almost 100, everything is doubling. The lights, the camera, the action, the, the filming of it is going to be filmed by an international film crew. Mm. So I mean, we this this is the this is the evolution that we have met this, given the spot, and we believe that it will start gaining traction both with the crowd, the media, and the sponsors. That's that's the ultimate drive. Ultimate drive there. Now, uh, if I want to, uh, because uh, a lot of people will be wondering. Okay, Dambe is a very popular sport in the north. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can't take the away from any, you can't take the away from the north. Mm -hmm. The origination yeah. is from the north, yeah. and uh, uh, a lot of Nigerians were like, okay, then Chidi <laughs> you know, and Antonio <laughs> Keleke, both of yeah. you from the southeastern part of yes, Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes. The vision, how it, what it, actually brought okay, it up? Okay, so the thing was this, right? I was I was I was head of content for Trace TV mm. at some point. Um, for, 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 for cl close to five years. And I was uh, instrumental in the opening of Trace Niger channel. Mm. And then while we were trying to crap that channel, and they were looking for things that were authentically Nigerian. And then I came across the picture of a guy called August Tudo, who had done some pictorial work on Dambe. And as I saw it, like sometime around 11 p.m. at night, I, I, I stared at that picture for like almost 30 minutes. And I had that resolve, that conviction, almost like an epiphany that this will be taken globally by me and my partner and then mm -hmm. i told tony and then we, we got into it and then i know it was a, and it, it was a barrier we went to alabarago in lagos um where most of my friends were going to canada i was going to alabarago so i mean it just it, it, for, for for us it was just seeing it as a diamond in the rough there was a language barrier there was a cultural barrier but we had the the the, the support of alhaji aminu goje who was the national chairman who was like look i'm hungry we are, we all want this thing to change whatever you can do if you people know how to do this thing better let's know let's let's you know and so we started so the genius of the journey was just not giving up mm -hmm. and there was there were many barriers all the way there were there were, there were even till when we started the league last year there were people who were you know doing videos on YouTube and saying that we want to take over their culture and we <laughs> that the, the Alaji Amino has sold out the Hausa culture to us for 100 million naira. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they were because of that we were ar ar nails. I don't know, there were, there were many, many views and opinions like, but we knew that 
the commercial vision sort of supersedes those sentiments. Mm. And we try to find a way to make it work in the sense. So we started putting it on YouTube first. And that opened an ecosystem of other Dambi channels to come out as well. So we started up with just like 44 views. Mm. And we grew it to about almost 70 million views that it is right now. And it became a fascination. And we realized that most of the views were coming from out of the country. It was coming from USA, Saudi Arabia, Philippines, Thailand, Brazil. And then that was a proof of concept that if online people can have such reaction, then we can create a higher value of this. So that's what we came up with, 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 with investments which we attracted last year to come up with a league, a league format. Structure the game, two minutes every round, three rounds, one minute break in between, ring girls, lights, cameras, like the, 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 USC, USC made close to about $2.5 billion in TV rights only from UFC, like last year. Now, imagine if 10% of that money comes into Nigeria. Just imagine the economic, like in today's Nigeria with all the dollar scarcity, imagine we can even tap into 10% of that global market. So we, but it has to be as original as it is, as you said, the culture is there. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not taking away the culture. The kara, the wrap on your hands, the sand pit, mm. the, the drummers, the, the, the mysticism, or whatever the fighters have, inter how they interact with the musicians, and how it feeds their spirit, and how the spirit feeds the way they fight. All of those elements, we had to let it re remain and retain. However, we had to gloss up that picture. We're still working on that picture frame. And it has cost us close to a million dollars in creating that that, that picture, that, that intensity. So we brought all the fighters, signed them a contract. Some of them didn't even know how to put a signature. Some of them just used the Nike sign as their signature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just to, just to sign, and then we had to explain to them that you are now signed on to us, just the way footballer is signed on to a football club. And then you're going to be paid a salary. You're going to be paid wi you know, regular wages. And then it helped them to plan their lives, because now they realize that they have regular pay. And then afterwards, we created a, a, a training system. Because many of them cannot speak English. So, I mean, if you have UFC or your WWE fighter who want to fight the Dambi fighter and we go for the press conference, they cannot, they cannot face the international press. They can face the press in Nigeria and have, and have uh, uh, interpreters. But they could, so we have, to, we have to, right now, we haven't taken them under classes. So it's been a whole, like, you know, washing of the system. And I know, fine, we, we, me, Tony and I, we have this outsider view because we are not from the culture and that's clear and we're not changing that. However, we just sort of had that outside. We see the reasons why sometimes the spot has been where it was for a long time. We see why sometimes there are layers of people who, are, who have nepotistic views on how to run the business. But we just came in and said, look, everybody, guys, just trust us. Trust us, we're taking this somewhere. And they've, they've, they've cooperated, you know, immensely, to be honest with you. Mm. See, the, uh, the co-founder of uh, Dambi World has been with us in the studio talking about how it all started, how it's going, and the vision of the Dambi Warriors. And to let you know, the Super Fire 3 is coming up in Abuja, the velodrome of Emco Abiola Stadium. Talking about the press conference. Yesterday, press conference actually organized uh, for this fight that will be coming up on Sunday. But just to catch a glimpse of these fighters how they were uh, dancing and also showing that they're ready for this fight. In it, just in a nutshell, we'll be back after this timeout.
that's the way of life there. I saw that particular clip and you feel, well, it's really going to be hot on Sunday when this fight will be coming up there. Why are we watching that clip, yeah. Chidi? I saw uh, two foreigners. Yeah. Parts of them that will be fighting. So explain how, because I saw the way it was as if they've been, <laughs> they've been fighting for years. Yeah. Okay, take us through this. Okay, so so basically we brought two fighters, one from Russia, uh, that is uh, Deadly Dennis, mm -hmm. right? And then we brought another fighter from Poland, Mask, also called the White Mamba. Um, so they are MMA fighters, mixed martial arts fighters, but we they, they, they decided to come fight Dambi. And so they've been going to kind of training. Uh, they've, they've gone to uh, Maraba and spent like three days there. Today they're going to the, to the National Stadium to further their training. Mm. So they've been trying to really work on their, up, their, their dominant hand and how to defend. Because all I keep begging them is please defend. Don't let those boys hit you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> now, now that you said they are taking training for three days, uh, is it just more like, uh, days. okay, more than three yeah. days. Is it that, okay, because uh, they are MMA fighters and they want to participate in Dambi, and yeah. like you said, you are warning them to avoid the blow coming from the yeah, Nigerian yeah, fighters. Yes, yeah, they should. Uh, is it like, uh, okay, you are trying to exhibit them to see that how Dambi is actually... So fought. basically, we, 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 are, we are globalizing the sport. Okay. And so to globalize it, we need to introduce talent. Talents that have charisma, character. That, because boxing is, is, is Muhammad Ali, let's face it. I mean, one, that, that character really carried the sport. So we need that those characters. They could be in Nigeria, they could be out of Nigeria, they could be even in the South, who knows? But to take it on a global journey, we need that, we need that internationalized fight. And so these guys said, okay, we said, okay, let us start bringing them in. The first, the first season, we brought someone from Saudi Arabia. Oh my goodness, he was knocked out, hmm. like twice, you know. Um, we brought someone from Algeria. He, the first fight, he, he won. The second fight, he was knocked out. Um, now, this is the third attempt. And now we say, okay, let's, let's leave Algeria or Saudi Arabia, let's go to Europe. And, and see, see if and they see can do it. If they can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so automatically, it means yeah. next next season now, maybe you guys will go to South, uh, sorry, South America. We were trying to bring someone from the United States, mm. but a black American, you know, but he didn't, he, he had another engagement, but he, he was really willing to. Um, I mean, we felt African, African Americans, you know, they, 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 they tell the international global story. I mean, when it, whatever they, they touch is cool, right? Mm. I mean, if, if so, we, 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 we brought them, we we're trying to bring those fighters to just give the, the, the sports like that international feel and get and pro propagate it so that mm. somebody's watching it on, on YouTube out there in 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 Brazil and they say that look this fight that this damage is not only for Hausa people in the sense uh, and I think um, imitation is the best mode of flattery how do they call that statement mm -hmm. like so um, it's it's something that and the fighters are very receptive of, of, of the foreign fighters and they've been trying to show them even though there's been a language barrier but it's almost as if they communicate you know you know start in your cup and the <laughs> just, to just, to, just, to make, just to feel like, okay, guys, like we, 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 we can feel we, we are together. Like, you know, I, I saw them exchanging Jesse yesterday. Yeah. Like, the, the, yeah. the, so, the yeah. Russian brought the, the a Jesse. The Russian brought a Jesse, and he was like, the Russian is actually a military guy who, hmm. who was an ex military guy. He's hard, he's a, he's a difficult guy, to be honest with you. We've been trying to tell him this is how to fight. He's like, I want to fight. I, I just hope you won't come with the, uh, the Russian military title. Yeah, so, so, so I, I'm, that's the only guy I'm scared of. Mm -hmm. you know? so because out of anger, emotions, and yes, yes, so I, I mean, it would be interesting to see how the, the, the Polish guy looks all nice, smiley, dancing all over the place. But the Russian guy looks like, I just want to. He told me, do you want to knock up? Hmm? Do you want to knock up? Give me knock up. Yeah? So, I mean, it, it, you need to come here and watch the, the event tomorrow, like to see how the local guys will interact with the foreign guys and what impact they have on the sport. And let us imagine that these Zambi guys will go to Kano, will go to Maraba, will go to Alabarago, and they will energize the sport. And, will, and people will realize that this is a career. This is not just a hobby. This is not just something. Because before, I wish, when I go to the Zambi people, you see a Yugot seller. When it's time to fight, he takes off his shirt. This is a Yugot guy to fill and fight. You need to take it as you need to train, you need to upgrade, you need to become technical. 
And that's, those are the details. That's why we are making this international flight. Because when they come, they're on a schedule. They're like, we need to train five hours a day, three hours a day. We need to sleep right. We need to avoid alcohol. We need to avoid uh, smoking. And we need to tell these fighters that, guys, look, you need to adapt this lifestyle because that is what is globally ob ob obtainable. However, you're going to fight what is unique to you and what you have the, you, you were born to, to, to do, but you're going to adapt it to global international standards. Okay, well, right now, I have uh, maybe two more questions for yeah. you. Let's talk about partnership. Okay. Uh, taking this fight so for the audience out there yeah. like we're having you right now yeah. there are people uh wonder okay what has been the push uh, the partnership is growing and growing mm -hmm. and yeah. it's becoming something that uh, almost every branch wants to key in so so so, so basically let's let, i mean the truth of the matter is that it's not really easy to sell brand or to sell an asset from northern nigeria in, in, i mean this is we this is just me realizing it from experience it seems like if you take an afrobeat show to the, to, the, to the sponsorship market, it's easier to get sponsors. If you take an event in Lagos or, you know, it's easier to get, or even Abuja. But to take Dambi was not really easy because fine, everybody was like, what is this? It looked dirty and... They didn't want to... This is local. This is traditional. Yeah, it's too local <laughs> for us, that kind of thing. You know, so we, we, we need to make the sport aspirational so that brands realize that I am going... So, like our audience that is aspiring to this, we will follow them on that journey. So it's not been an easy journey. It's been almost like the third season and we keep scraping at, you know, sponsorship, but our, our, the injection of funds into the thing is sort of bigger than the cost, the, 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 the revenue that sort of comes in. However, the whole idea is to scale it to a point where advertisers see that it is irresistible. Because if you check it, the northern market is almost the equivalent of France and Germany combined. So there are numbers to it. But maybe people may feel that these numbers are not well categorized. They are not watching one thing at a time. They are so segmented. So this whole idea is to create a totally big national sensation that is very popular in the north and dovetails to the south and makes it international. So you have a base and sponsors can say, okay, let me come in here and, and align with you guys because I can see this huge following. That's why distribution is key. That's why we're having this partnership with your channel to, uh, to, to, to stream it live, to watch, for you to watch it live. Because once we can begin to distribute live, this is the first sport that's going to be shown live outside of football in the country that people sit down and want to have appointment TV over. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very important that we distribute. The distribution brings the partnership. The partnership increases the commercial. The commercial dovetails back to the fighters. The fighters' earnings increase. It attracts more people and pull them out of poverty and bring them into a new career path. Mm. Instead of banditry, instead of whatever, book all, whatever devices. all the vices, this is a great option for them. Well, we've been talking with uh, uh, Chidi Ayina, their co-founder, Dambi Warriors. They'll be having the Super League, uh, uh, the third edition at the Velodrome, MQ Abiola Stadium uh, by 4 p.m. on Sunday. And it'll be live on Trust TV for you to enjoy that traditional sport. It's really getting momentum. It's going gaga, they say, in Nigeria Palace. But right now, uh, we look at, uh, yesterday I saw you with uh, the, uh, the special assistant to the Minister of Arts, Culture mm. and Creative Economy mm. was around. And uh, it seems, yes, because that ministry, the sport is uh, yeah, traditional yeah, and all that. Yeah. What about the relationship with the Ministry of Sport? Yes, okay, so we, 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 we have a relationship with the Ministry of Sports and also through the Traditional Sports Federation, mm. which we are affiliated to. And which is, they are also part of, going to be part of this event in terms of making sure that we cross the I's and dot the T's and give us some technical support and technical assistance. Also, the Ministry of, of, of Arts Culture is looking at this as, okay, let us look at it this way. Some of the biggest exports that have come out of Nigeria have been Nollywood and um, Afrobeats. Can we have Dambia as the next export? Mm. It's very possible, very fit, and we are on a journey to it. And so the, 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 the ministry looking at this, as this is, I mean, as you can see on the screen, that we met the minister, and she has been very, very, very supportive of, of, of this our effort to try and see that we take this in on a global journey. And she, she, her ministry has, were there at the event, they are supporting us, they are, they, they, they are, they are trying to see how they can use it as a, as a social tool to bring a lot of young boys out of vice, you know, so we can create centers to take boys that are hooked on all these uh, uh, drugs, drugs and, and stuff, and you know, rehabilitate them, and also possibly look at them as you use combat sports as a way for them to divert all their, all their, all their pent up energy and, and emotions. You know, so I mean, I saw one of the fighters the other day who told me that he's, he showed me on his phone that he's getting married, that his parents, that the parents of the girl wants to give him the, their daughter because they feel like now he earns 
irregular salary. <laughs> 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 He's a pro now. He's a pro now. He's a professional. <laughs> okay, taking you from that level of pro, uh, these uh, these fighters. Yeah. I know you, they, you actually have them on the that scale of uh, being settled monthly and also the yeah, uh, allowances. Yeah. Then what about them? Uh, is there anything like uh, the way you have UFC fighters that are professionals or yeah. uh, wrestlers? Is there anything in place for them mm. to see where uh, maybe Dambe, okay, they also have the level where you can become a pro? Yeah, so basically, I mean, we, ha we run a professional league whereby, like, we have rules. Like, when you come into the camp, like, since they've been in Abuja, they've been in a hotel and nobody, they don't go out, you don't go out there or bring somebody into, they become superintendent. Mm. Just the way the super egos open a camp okay. and then the players are... Discipline. Discipline, you know what I mean? And that those rules are, are very clear. There's a schedule, you go to the press, you go to, you know. So we have six fighters in three different categories. Now, the truth of the matter is that at the end of the season, the last two fighters are relegated. And then we recruit two new fighters to join. So there's a competition for everybody to stay from number one to four. Don't, don't, if you enter five and six, you're done. Mm. So the, the, the lead is very tight. If you follow what the lead is, uh, you see the side and you see the ranking. It literally, you see almost every, like four people on, on, on nine points or six points. You know, one draw and three low wins. So sometimes people have to qualify based on, you know, math, you know. So th there's a professionalism to which we, we say this is, this, is your, this is your career path and you need to take it as serious as, as it is. However, when they leave the league, we want to make sure that they have other social tools so that, so that they don't fall back. You know, so we, we're creating a little academy of skills and giving them ability to, to learn, to, to le to literacy, to have simple arithmetic, simple communication, communication yes. skills. And then if it's how to repair a phone, if it's how to repair a laptop, if it's, you know, whatever hand, handy thing you can put yourself to, so that when you leave the league, you are still socially relevant. And that's where the ministry is coming in with us to help us to, you know, then, then those that continue to stay within, we, we put them either as referees, as officials, as coaches, you know, because most of the coaches are former fighters, you know, who understand the technique and who can watch the fight from outside and also train the new foreign fighters that are coming in. Mm. Train the new, because as, as more and more interest is coming in from out of the country, we need people to train the foreigners and say, this is how we fight it, just the way judo. My kids learn karate every Saturday. Mm. So, I mean, the, the, imagine the amount, the years that, that karate knowledge has spread across the world from wherever it was in Asia. The same thing that needs to happen with Dambe. So you need all these young boys to be able to evangelize the sport, understand the technique, document it, and propagate it around the world. So there is a career path for them. And it is very obvious that um, this has to start now. And so it's professionalism and the way we treat them, the way they, I mean, there's, you, before when we started, let, let me give you, 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 you start, you go to, to their room and you see girlfriends, you see this one, you say, hey, guys, come on. This, this is not how this is run. Hmm. But how many hours do you train for? What are you taking that is inhibiting your, your stamina level? Because when you drink all these things or you smoke crazy things and then you start panting after, after two minutes. No, we want you to stay the whole hog. So it's, 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 it's the professionalism that we actually introduce, not just in how we package the fights, but how we engage the fighters. Mm. So these guys, are, these guys are earning up to, uh, as in upwards of three million in every season, four million, five million every season. Which some of them just one of them just just completed his house in Kano. That's so, a good one. That's a good one. So I mean, so the thing is, we are, make them understand that, and there's more money to be made as more of the advertising and the distribution increases. So their, their professionalism is that you take it serious and you train hard to stay relevant. And if you don't, if you on the bottom two, you leave. Okay, talking about all this, let's talk about uh, uh, that has to do with their health. Mm. Because if they are not healthy, yes. these fights can't actually yes. hold. Yes. Well. So, what is the Dambe Warriors organizer doing to see that these uh, fighters, let me call them the pro fighters, the pro fighters yes. uh, what are you doing to give them that uh, healthy kind of living? Yeah, so that's a very good question. I mean, we, we have a health insurance program for all of them. Once you're in the league, you have a health insurance cover. 
So, uh, and also we have some, some, some things that we do here, like uh, telling them to fight the teeth guard. It's even difficult for us to, to implement that. Mm. But, but they are not used to they're it. They're not used to it. So sometimes when they're even fighting, <laughs> I saw one of them as he's fighting. There's a way to fight this. He just takes out the thing from his teeth and throws it, it away. <laughs> 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 they are not used to it. Yeah, they're not. So it's a process. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's gradual. So, so we, we have these health, these health uh, issues. I mean, one of them had an eye, eye problem the other day, and, and he was covered by, you know, by, the, by, the, by the health okay. insurance okay. program uh, uh, offer we have for them. And he had his cortina. And if he was not fighting under our league, he would have he was going to lose one of his eyes, gone. Like so, he 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 basically had to go for a corrective surgery, but he was not even able to sort him out. But at least we were able to make him see a bit dimly with one of his eyes. So this was these are some of the health programs that we put in place for these fighters, covered by one of the biggest insurance companies in the country. I won't mention names so that you know. But <laughs> yeah, so so um, yeah, we 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 have health insurance cover for them as every professional league will, will be. Even the new fighters that are coming here, we had to do it singular health insurance for them in case anything happens with the fighters and we tell the fighters take this on this voice <laughs> <laughs> it's been a boisterous one in the studio with uh, Chidi Aina co-founder of Dambe Warriors really if you love uh, UFC the one you watch where you celebrate Israel at this year, and all the Nigerians fighting Kamaru Usman but we have the one that is more traditional more African more Nigerian more Northern and that is happening on Sunday live Trust TV you can join us by 4 p.m. Where that, those fights will be coming up, although that's going to be 4 10, according to what you said. 10 minutes after 4. That fight four. will be on on our station for you to enjoy for the next one hour, uh, 15 minutes, for you to really enjoy this fight. And really, we just have to push for the development of sport in Nigeria. Grassroots sport, we always want to make sure we promote Nigerian story as is our accolade, our slogan from the station. But really, Dambi Warrior is going, uh, is going places and we just have to support them and also be partners. And now, talking about this league, what yeah. are we expecting tomorrow? So, that is, I mean, I mean to, 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 tomorrow is going, to be, is, going to be, is going to be crazy in mm -hmm. the sense that um, we're going to have two of the top fighters in the, in the lightweight going against a guy called Yaramage. Yaramage was the last, was last year's champion. He's going against Nasrallah. Nasrallah is the new entrant into the league. And he just sort of, you know, he grew pop, 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 and he's, he's top two. So two of them are going to fight. You're going to have the middleweight. That, what you need to watch that middleweight. You see, Shaban and Dogo Messi. Shaban was in last year's final. He lost. Dogo Messi is a new entrant into the league. He came in from this, this third season. And he's already, and, and the two of them have... I mean, different fight styles. Shaban fight uses his leg because in Dambe you can actually apply your leg, but our rules you have to put throw the leg above the knee. So you're going to have Shaban and Messi. Two of them are literally raw muscle, like very lean muscle fighters who who are, who are very aggressive. They fought together in, in Kano, and they had two of them knocked each other out twice while the game was going on. So there's tension and rivalry between them, and we we'll know who is going to become tops today or uh, tomorrow, then in the heavyweight, you're going to have Yasanda. Yasanda is a new guy to the league as well. I'm going against Ali Kanibelo. Ali Kanibelo was last year's uh, finalist, but he lost. So this is his time. Ali Kanibelo, that's the, the buff guy you saw mm. hitting his, you know. He, he, he has been in the league for, 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 for three seasons, and he's been in Dambi for over 20 years. And now this is the only time that, you, that he can really make it. He's, mm. he's the, this is the best time for him. So you need to, that will be the final match of the day mm. between those two fighters who will crown the heavyweight champion. That's the heavyweight between champion. Between who and who now? Between Yasanda and Ali Kanimbelu. Oh, Ali Kanimbelu. Yes, okay. Ali Kanimbelu. Yes, Ali Kanimbelu is the, is the, the buff fighter. Buffy, yes, yes buff fighter. He, he's going to, uh, go, he's 101 kg weight. Mm. He's going to go against Yasanda. Why is he small, is a bit smaller? But Yasanda brought down the defending champion. <laughs> Uh, 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 who, the defending champion who they call uh, 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 Dogo Meta mm -hmm. he brought him with just one heavy punch in Katsina. So you need to watch that fight. I mean, it's going to be the star fight. It's going to be at the end of, 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 of the session. It's going to be three-hour action-packed pound-for-pound fight. We're going to have like uh, 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 presenters from, we are flying in from Lagos, Influencers are bringing it in. Some of them just arrived at the hotel just before I came to the studio. Everybody, the, the production is going to be top notch. It's going to be three hours of intense 
fighting. I'm going to have the foreign fighter. The Russian guy says he doesn't want the drums when he's coming out. He wants to play Russian Byzantine music while he's coming out. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the guy the from Polish Poland guy. says he wants to wear an Agbada when he's coming out for his entry. You know, mm. so all of all these things we're going to we're going to have colorful entries with the music and and, and see how the whole thing interacts in an eight thousand capacity hall at the velodrome. The highest we did was Lagos or Joel, uh, uh, Alabarabu. 5,000 people. People were standing on top of the rooftops just to watch it. The one we're going to have tomorrow, we are, we are having about 30 buses to bus people from Nyanya and Day Day into the stadium. And we're going to have people from within. So we, we want it to be a festive atmosphere. Festive atmosphere. We want people going crazy. We want people really cheering these guys. Not like crazy, crazy. crazy. Yeah, crazy not crazy as in crazy. Yeah, not crazy as in crazy as in. Crazy, uh, yeah. Enjoying yeah, the enjoying vibe. Enjoying the invite, yeah. That guy, that, the last, that, yeah, the last that, guy that's, that's Ali Kanibelo. Yeah, that's Ali Kanibelo. <laughs> that's, if Ali Kanibelo okay. doesn't win in this time, then I, I, I don't know what next for him. Because mm. this, is, this, is the, this is glory. This is the time for him. This is the, his biggest you know, uh, uh, the biggest opportunity for him to, to win. And he's from the same house with Yasanda. They are from the same uh, 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 Jamus house, I think. Mm. So they, they are not actually meant to fight each other. They are meant to be like brothers. So. In fact, the younger fighter is his boy, in quotes. You okay. know, he, 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 that boy, he coached him on. But now he's, he's like a master and student fight, right? So it's going to be very interesting dynamics to look at there. A big one there. You look at the two of them. Uh, this is a big fight. Yeah, that's the two heavyweight guys. Uh, yes. the, the, the anger, the anger that, okay, you want to fight me yeah. as a master of this particular yeah, stroke yeah. won't be an easy one. And if, if, even from their demonstration, <laughs> you could see. Uh, let, let's, uh, okay, if you look at uh, uh, Ali Khan, in, Ali Khan seems to be really angry. That, yes, uh, that uh, he, has not won, he has not won this thing since we started. And, this is, and now he's coming to fight with somebody who is his student, more or less. Mm. You know, so I mean, it's uh, they, they fought in 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 Mina and and, and Ali Kanembelo won, but it was a very tight one, and and the, and the guy was respecting his his ogre in quotes. But right now he has to he has to pull, come out from to, respect, yeah, and yes, drop respect and drop it and, and go for the money. He's ended by price. He's one million naira for them. Seriously? Yes. You, you, you never win the fight. Win the fight. Yes. Your category. Yes. Serious. One million naira. Wow. So why will you respect him because he's your what? <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> when you are not more, you are not <laughs> like. understand. We'll be having a wonderful time in the studio with uh, Chidi Ayina. And really, it has been a big one there. Talking about this fight coming up on Sunday at the Velodrome of MK Abeola Stadium. Big fight. Nigerian sport, when it comes to traditional sport, Dambi is really going places. And we just have to continue to promote it. And that's why we have to showcase uh, him coming from Dambi Warriors on the show uh, this hour. I want to thank you for coming oh, on the show. You, really, so we appreciate much. it. Um, and yeah. really, at least uh, if other sports uh, can get this kind of uh, support, the, the, the way you pushing Dambi now, uh, Nigerian yeah. sport will go places. Yeah. So we appreciate your time for coming on the show. Thank Chidi you so Aina, much, thank you so thank much. You, thank you so okay, much. we go on the short break. So we'd like to let you have a feel of that uh, Dambi uh, press conference. By the time we return, we give you some matches coming up in the world of football. big one there for Dambe. Well, we just have to quickly take you through the world of football. A lot of actually happened and the one that will be happening for this weekend. Right, let's talk about CAF 
CAF Champions League where Rangers, uh, the fought hard, uh, they were able to defeat. They won their game, CAF uh, Champions League playoff. Rangers International, Eric Sangrada, Eric Branca of Angola, 1 0 in Uyo. Uh, even though Nigerians expect more because uh, it's not too smooth for them. Second leg will be tougher by the time they go to Angola there. And right now, uh, they were able to score that goal. Cuts of uh, uh, Ogule, who scored for them in the 78th minute. Right now, we have uh, Joseph Peter join us from Kaduna. Joseph, uh, <laughs> because of Danby, well, well, we're so sorry. It's getting more traditional, getting sweeter in the studio. Joseph Peter, good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I was actually enjoying that, uh, you know, discussion you are having about the uh, mm. And you know, I, I've been, I've been, I grew up in the north, and uh, see, seeing all these things is not the first time for me. I've actually witnessed uh, a Dembe game a lot at Sabongeri in Kano, and it's usually enjoyable. And it's very, very, you know, uh, nice to see that you know they are bringing it to the limelight because you know we can really make do of it in this side of the country, mm. and it can be an avenue where you know. Uh, uh, young men are really engaged in sport and they can go far because they, they are really, really good with this sport, you know, very, very good. Okay, well, because of our time, I will just run through two stories. Let's say uh, we talk about uh, Rangers, they were able to win their game, and Eyimba, uh, they play goalless over there in Bamako, Mali, against uh, a Toy Filante, where they play the Calf Confederation. Two in one for you, just in the brief. Yeah, uh, it was it was a very very nice one. I was very happy when I saw the results of Aimba, you know, getting an away draw uh, off the shore of this country. So it's good, you know. That means they position themselves very well to, you know, actually uh, just easily, you know, win that tie. Because I'm very very sure that when it when it, when the return leg, you know, comes comes to play uh, in Aba, they won't take it lightly with a, a, a twelve uh, philanthropy. I'm quite sure that they would, you know, win that game. So it's a positive one. However, it's not so positive with the with Rangers because you know when you are playing uh, in these uh, uh, calf competitions and you are playing at home, you need to take your chances. Uh, Rangers have not really been taking their chances when it comes to this competition. You know, it's right from the first game, this is a third game, and uh, they've had they've, not that they've not created chances. They've played well and created chances, but they've not taken it. And you know, you know that can haunt them. You know, when they are going to play this. You know, Angolan team away now. It's going to be very, very difficult for them. Espanyol will not just you know sit back now. They will see it as a chance for them, you know, to kill the tie by winning it, maybe by two goals to nothing. But hopefully, aim by get, uh, a Rangers rather gets to you know be able to stand the uphill uphill ta task guys before them. It's going to be really, really difficult, and we know that they don't have a good record as per all these away. So hopefully, they get to change them around. Really hope they do because you know it wasn't just uh, a, a good win for them, but it's a win and it's something to build on. And hopefully that this time around they get to change it. We are hoping that they get to change it, but it's not going to be easy for them. Okay, quickly because uh, we just have to run through those matches in the MPFL match day two coming up there. Games will be played and let's look at those fixtures quickly before we talk about it. Uh, and Asna, big one coming up the weekend matches there. Well, uh, let's go back to MPFL Nigerian Premier Football League. Uh, before we talk about Europe, let's promote our own there. Aqua United, Abia Warriors, Sunshine Stars against Raymond Stars, Battle of the Southwest, Derby, Rivers United, Atlant, Kano Pillars, Bayosa United, Niger Tornados against Nasarawa United, North Central. Central Derby, Katsina United, Bende Insurance, Shooting Star Plateau United, Ikorodu City against Rangers International on Wednesday due to their involvement in CAF Champions League. Any but also play on Wednesday against Lobby, while Academy Warriors Cry United to be rescheduled due to the flood that happened in Brunel State. Well, uh, that's how the match is slated for this weekend, and you can see that Nagas now against Nasarawa United, big match coming up there. Raymond Stars, Sunshine Stars, another Derby. Quickly, Joseph. Yeah, that's an oriental derby right there for you. You know, the Remo game, I like to call it that too. You know, it's going to be a very, very tough game. And I'm seeing this game too. It's very, very interesting. Bielsa United against Kano Pillars, a very, very interesting game because Kano Pillars are trying to come back to, you know, where we know them to, to be the top of the, 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 the league. And um, another game that, you know, it's also catching my eye would be this Aimba and Lobby Stars that will be played on Wednesday because of the uh, rescheduling, because of Aimba's. Uh, uh, engagements in the in in, in, uh, in, in the weekends. Also, it, those those are good good games here for us to enjoy in the Nigerian Premier League. Hopefully, we get the best out of the games and uh, may the may the may the best team win. May the best team win. As we're talking about that, let me quickly take you to your team. I know you are a gunner, so gonna be playing against what you most for. The battle is in London. What are you expecting? Quickly, <laughs> Joseph. 
That's a big one coming well, up there. Usually, usually, usually this is this this is this is the biggest game of Arsenal season. I, I don't believe the, the, the Chelsea game or the City game or the Man United game is actually bigger than this because these are our bitter rival. Usually they make it difficult for us. I, 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 I remember last year they were they were part of the reason why we didn't win the win the league and they were happy losing that game against Man City. Uh, for us not to win the league, but then not taking in, not taking any, anything away from them, they are actually a good side and they are playing at home, whereby we are playing with uh, the possibility of maybe two players that are very very integral to the performance of Arsenal last season not actually featuring. But nevertheless, I am not giving an excuse, and I'm quite sure that one on one we are good enough to take a three point at White Hart, at White Hart Lane, and I'm quite positive that Arsenal will take that three point. And I see this game as a game. For Raheem Sterling himself to come up, to come in and you know shine and you know start uh, a new leaf for himself and you know give his career a chance and a boost by actually scoring in the North London Derby. So uh, okay. I'm really really expecting and I'm quite positive about this. Yeah, positive about this now. I want to appreciate your time with us, Joseph. Apologies because so that bit became uh, <laughs> the talk of the show. Thank you so much for joining us from Kaduna. They are big one coming out Totti and versus uh, Arsenal. Thank you so much, Joseph Peter. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, so, well, big matches coming up in the world of football. Before we go, we we'll just have to leave you with the matches in the top five leagues in Europe. But uh, for those who love Dambi, Velodrome is the place to be at the MK Abela Stadium on Sunday. We'll be building it live there. And I also want to appreciate everyone, Chidi Aina, too, for coming on the show. I'm Adini Adrisha First. But it's always business and fitness. Have a splendid weekend. I'll leave you with the top matches in Europe.